Judy, good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. I'm glad to know that I didn't scare you off from the last time that you were on the show. You were talking back in July about your book, Yes, I Can Say That. Uh, When they come for comedians, we are all in trouble. When we spoke, I had said something to you about, hey, in spite of COVID, are you getting out there? Are you doing a circuit? Are you performing? And you said something about being in the middle of a field on top of a stage. And that was about all you could do. (laughs) Well, you know, I actually ended up working all summer uh, outside. Look, it's not ideal, but just being in front of people and telling Joe, and people were dying to laugh. So, yes. Yeah, it doesn't matter where it is. We've been doing it. I did it on the back of a flatbed truck. I uh, performed in Central Park. We're resilient people. And we have to be. You know, if we sit on a shelf and we wait for all this to blow over, we're just going to die right. more and more and more inside. Exactly. Not good. <laughs> no! I I don't know if I had mentioned this to you last time, but I was supposed to do my first five minutes of stand-up comedy literally the Friday that lockdown happened. So I never got up there. And my joke, of course, is that the universe was not ready for this and was protecting, right? right? All of the stuff that I had written, my five minutes, which for the layman does not seem like a long time, but five minutes on stage by yourself is an eternity, right? None of it translates now. So have you had to translate your jokes from a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and make them COVID friendly? No. Do I do anything friendly? (laughs) Okay, fair point. You know, I had some jokes that weren't going to be funny. Like I I used to have a joke about, you know, people on FaceTime, pre-pandemic, people on FaceTime who like take photos of themselves in the ICU with like a tube coming out of them, you know, and, you know, an IV pole and, and, and an oxygen mask. And they're like, wish me luck. And they don't tell you what, what why they're in. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it was just a bit about like how ridiculous people are on social media and they need so much attention. And then, you know, COVID it. So that doesn't translate now. No, it um, doesn't. So, so you know, it's interesting for a comic because you have to change with the times. And so it's a challenge. Uh, Judy Gold joining us. The book is, of course, Yes, I Can Say That. Every generation says that the generation after them is lazy. The generation before them is out of touch. This has been happening since time immemorial. So I'm sure there were definite times a while ago that people were like, oh, well, you can't say that. And that's not politically correct, even though they weren't using those terms. But now we're in a situation where people are going way beyond. It's not about political correctness anymore. Give us a little bit of a thumbnail about what you're writing about in Yes, I Can Say That. When they come for the comedians, we're all in trouble. Well, the book is really, uh, it's about free speech and censorship and cancel culture in the world of comedy. And the fact that, you know, if you're offended by a joke, that's on you. That's You know, the first point in my book is, is basically... Uh, it's from my friend Eddie Sarfadi, and it basically says, if you go into a comedy club and get upset that you got offended, that is like getting on a roller coaster and getting upset that you got scared. We are social commentators. We speak truth to power. And when you get upset or offended by a word or a topic, you know, that's on you. That doesn't mean that person can't discuss that, you know? And you have to take in what is the intent of the comedian. Like, what are they trying to say? Because all we're trying to do is make you laugh, you know? Right, right. So there's a fine line between, you know, hate speech and people trying to make you laugh and doing comedy. You know, we we weren't thinking about you when we wrote the joke. Everyone thinks it's all about them all the time. I've had this conversation with so many people regarding... Uh, okay, an example. When Justin Bieber was on the rise and he started to make, you know, chart top 40 and things like that, there was uh, a man in his 50s who said to me, oh, his music is terrible. And I said, that's not music for you. Surprise, surprise. Right. Not everything that comes out, they're like, I really hope Rick likes it. Right, exactly, exactly. They're hoping that a high school girl likes it and buys the album and bugs mom and dad for tickets to the show. Right. Exactly. And it's like, if, a com- if they don't like a joke a com- comic says, they want, they don't ever, that person should never perform again. It's like when you go see, like, your favorite band, right? Mm-hmm. And, and they do a song you don't like, do you then say, oh, they should never be able to perform again? No, change the channel. Turn off the radio. You know? Well, and I think that we, not, we shouldn't be able to have free speech. Yeah. Well, and I think that 
in this day and age of everything being digitally saved, we are telling people you're not allowed to make a mistake. You're not allowed to grow up. You're not allowed to learn. You said something right. 16 years ago, and I dug it out, and now you should come to account for that. When 16 years ago, that joke might have been something that was minimal and like totally didn't even get on anyone's radar. Right. But now... Right. You know, 20 years later, we're now scrutinizing everything. And I think there's a difference if you hurt someone and you are unapologetic. That's a problem. If you well, made a mistake yeah. and you learned from it, there should not be boycotts. Oh, yeah. If you do a joke that is now deemed, you know, racist or homophobic or anti-Semitic or whatever, anti-LGBTQ... Okay, if you did a joke 20 years ago, and then you apologize and say, you know, listen, I learned from it, and you use it as a learning experience. It's like people and marginalized people, all they want is for you to change your mind about them and for you to learn a little more and to grow and, and become someone else. So when someone does evolve and you just say, yeah, but 20 years ago you said this, you know, that's just not fair. Because that's what your goal is, is to get people to, you know, evolve. And then you get punished them, they can never, you know, I don't know. It, it really is annoying. No, I absolutely agree. Well, because there's something about an evolution. And when something is brand new, not everyone is going to be able to wrap their minds around it right away. And sometimes we need the buffer of comedy in order to bring something home, in order to make something mainstream, in order for it to take the barbs off of it and make it something a little bit more palatable. Share her book. Yeah. It's uh, Judy Gold's Yes, I Can Say That. When they come for the comedians, we're all in trouble. Judy, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. You have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care.